hello guys i was receiving so many queries regarding that how an internationally qualified or internationally trained dentist can practice in the united states or in canada so here i am with this video to give you a brief guideline or an outline about this whole situation here in Canada as well as in the United States. Well, first of all, we will discuss about the <clears throat> process of acquiring a dental license in Canada. Here we have National Dental Examination Board of Canada, which governs the field of dentistry or the profession of dentistry well you have to go through the equivalency process once you come to this part of the world to this country and over here we have various pathways to accomplish your process of getting a license to become a dentist in canada well First of all, if you come over here as an immigrant dentist or you are already a Canadian citizen or PR and you are studying dentistry somewhere else in another part of the world, then you have to take certain exams before you will be able to step into the process the first exam which is being conducted by ndeb is the afk exam the assessment of fundamental knowledge exam well after that you have two options either you can go for the direct license and you will be attempting the second exam which is being called assessment of clinical judgment exam or ACG exam or you can apply to two years or three years qualifying degree completion programs of various universities in Canada but remember some of the universities they now do not accept the AFK exam scores or results. They accept the results of ADET, which is being conducted by the American Dental Association. We will discuss it in detail later. Just letting you know that some of the universities, they do not honor the results of AFK exam. Well, if you pass the ACG, then you will be able to attempt NDE, CC or NDEC exam. Then there will be certification process. After that, no matter you are coming from the direct licensing or you are coming after attending two years or three years degree completion program from a university, you have to take this exam, which is again being conducted by the NDEB. That is written and OSCE exam, the objective structured clinical exam. Then after passing these two, you will be getting the NDEB certificate or NDEB certification and then whichever the province you wish to practice you have to contact the provincial licensure authority and then you will get the provincial license and start practicing in that province but keep in mind <clears throat> if you go to United States to do your D DDS or DMD like the three-year or two-year program over there which is being 
conducted by different universities in United States for the internationally qualified dentists, then again you would be able to uh, practice in Canada, but you have to take these written and OSCE exams. And after getting the certification from NDAB, then you have to apply to the provincial authorities to give you the license to practice in that particular province. Well, how we start with this NDAB equivalency process? Like say for instance, somebody wants to go to this Canadian system. Well, this is the website of NDEB equivalency process how to apply review the required documents review after reviewing the documents download the application guide and other resources developed to help the with the application process well this information has been developed to help you submit the correct documents in the required formats the first time because what was happening in the past without having the proper information people were submitting the documents and unfortunately some of them they were not submitting as the correct format mentioned by the NDEB and then what was happening their processing time was increasing because again they had the NDB was asking them to send the correct documents they were send, sending the correct documents and then of course again some time for the verification as well as all that process because of course a lot many applicants are applying every day for this equivalency process. Well, before you go there for uh, like submission of the documents, you have to create your NDEP Connect account. And then you will be submitting your documents for evaluation to NDEP. Well, five to six months preparation is required for the first exam that is AFK that is being conducted twice a year usually in the month of february and in the month of august you have three chances to pass this exam and the passing percentile is 75 percent previously there were 300 mcqs in the exam and the exam was paper based but now this exam is paper-based as well as it is being conducted at the Prometric Center. And there are 200 MCQs. This exam covers all the basic and clinical subjects. After that, the second exam, assessment of clinical judgment exam, the ACG exam, <coughs> at least three to four months preparation is required for this exam. But experienced clinicians, they take less time to prepare for this exam. Again, there are three chances to pass this exam. Well, the passing percentile is again 75%. And this exam is computer based being conducted at the Prometric Center. There is no paper-based exam for this exam. There is no paper-based format. Both these sections, the two sections, comprise of case scenarios with MCQs and multiple correct answers, as well as periapical, bite-wing x-rays. Well, at times they give you the panorex x-rays with the MCQs as well. Well, there will be 150 almost, it could be plus minus 150 MCQs for the whole exam. So equally divided in each section. 
There will be more emphasis on oral medicine, oral pathology, periodontology, the new classification system, 2017-18 classification. Medical emergencies, management of a medically compromised patient in a dental office, etc. And yes, in the radiology part, more emphasis on the evaluation of caries according to the new classification system. One to, to two cases of orthodontics are also there. Then there will be some questions on the pain of endodontic origin and its management. Questions would be on analgesics, antimicrobials, local anesthetic doses, etc., etc. Prescription writing is also very important. You must be knowing how the prescriptions are being written in North America because only North American norms are followed in this exam. Then the third exam, the NDECC, which has actually replaced the previous exam of assessment of clinical skills. The purpose of this exam is to assess the clinical competence of the dentist trained in non-accredited programs. This new NDEC test center located in the Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada. It will offer sessions multiple times a week throughout the year. This NDEC can be taken unlimited number of times within 60 months or five years period after you clear your ACJ exam. So what is there in this NDEC exam? There are two parts, two components. In component one, there will be practical exam. Practical in the sense that you will be working on the mannequins on typodonts. You will be preparing a class 2 amalgam cavity. You will be filling a class 2 amalgam cavity. Then class 2 composite filling, class 4 composite filling. You will be preparing a tooth for full veneer crown. It could be porcelain veneer, uh, like porcelain fused to uh, metal. It could be a full ceramic crown or it could be a zirconia crown. And then on your own preparation, you will be asked to construct a provisional crown. Well, you will be asked to perform an endodontic or RCT excess cavity. It could be an anterior tooth. It could be a posterior tooth. Then second component will be situational judgment. And actually here you will be asked to show your competence, how you will be tackling with the situations, work related situations. Well, not only related to this, but just to give you an idea, like patient-centered care, assess the caries risk, manage patient's needs, gather the data, develop a problem list, establish the diagnosis, then tell what process or what procedure are you going to perform first? What will be your next procedure? So the sequence of the treatment, plan the treatment and you have to demonstrate how you are going to keep the dental record. Then professionalism. You, there you will be asked to handle some ethical situation you are into and they will see how nicely you would be able to tackle with that situation. How to send a patient 
to some specialist referring how to write the referral letter etc etc how you will be using social media to enhance your practice then communication and collaboration how to maintain the privacy of your patient maintain the records writing a referral how to write a lab prescription could be for a removable partial denture when we talk about the removable partial denture in this part of the world it means a cast partial denture discuss the treatment with the patient with the if the could be a situation where patient is not having a capacity to take the decision maybe too elderly suffering from dementia or a child not in a capacity to take the decision for themselves so whoever would be the guardian they will be there to discuss the treatment so situation could be that they can create any type of situation then how to document the informed consent for some procedure demonstrate cultural competence interact with your own staff in different situations give post op instructions for some procedure then practice and information management like manage the patient records follow the protocols make evidence based decisions on some clinical situation health promotion for example demonstrate an understanding for social determinants of health promote access to care for all individuals promote measures to prevent oral disease injury advocate for patients the scenarios in the above table these are just examples they do not reflect all these situations that can be so just to give you an idea well after that the oski and written exam this exam is mandatory for every dentist whether direct license track or a graduate of a dental school it is a two days exam there are three chances to pass this exam and again the passing percentile for the written is 75% day one the exam is just like your afk exam written exam day 2 is oski exam with multiple stations and problem based questions or case scenarios with most appropriate answers upon completion ndeb awards license to practice but they don't guarantee now you have to go to the provincial authorities because they have their own regulations like say for instance you want to practice in british columbia so you will go to british columbia's provincial authority or you want to practice in ontario so you will go to the royal college of dental surgeons ontario and then apply for the provincial licensure well there is an alternate path as i told you you can go for dental schools and attain 2 years or 3 years of the dental school after passing the afk exam or in some of these schools edet exam first of all keep in mind to get into the dental school you need to be a canadian citizen or a permanent resident university of manitoba they have some seats for international students as well but you have to check with them you should be having good gpa from back home and for that they have now introduced this system that you should get your documents verified from wes and then send them the wes report toefl or ielts whatever suits you both are accepted in canada by the universities well as i told you every university they have their own criteria the admission is highly competitive 
At the moment, University of Toronto, they require ADET. University of Manitoba, they require AFK exam. You have to pass it. Alberta requires AFK exam. Dalhousie University requires AFK exam. Western Ontario requires AFK exam. McGill University, it requires ADET exam. For Saskatchewan, University of Saskatchewan, on their website for the session which started in 2022, AFK was the requirement. But on their website for 2023, it says for admissions requirements and application deadlines for the upcoming fall 2023 intake, contact their admission department on this website. Uh, like on this email address as i told you now universities they want your wes evaluation and it should be course by course that assessment should be course by course now bench exams and interview every university they don't just give you or they don't just offer you the admission like that they will call you for bench exams and interview or just for interview university of toronto and mcgill university they conduct interviews only previously they were conducting mmis but it depends it could be an uh, like mmis it could be a one long interview here gpa from your back home it matters a lot and then you have to definitely score quite high in the ADET. University of Western Ontario, they have prior learning assessment exam, PLA exam. Two days of practical exam with almost six exercises on typodont and if candidate clears that, then there is an interview. They conduct their own course as well to train the candidates for this PLA exam. Dalhousie, well, they call you for one day, and in one day you have to complete two exercises on the typodont, and then there is one written exam, and then there is, after the written exam, there is an interview as well on the same day. University of Alberta, well, five to six days of extensive practical exam, and they assess you on the basis of that. Manitoba, they call you for two days, there will be practical exam and then written and interview as well within these two days. Saskatchewan, again, they will call you for a practical exam on the typodonts as well as for they conduct the interview as well. People also ask me about the cost. Well, it is a costly venture. You need to have the fee for, first of all, your evaluation process, like your documents evaluation. Then fee for AFK exam, fee for the ACG exam. Previously that ACS exam, now it is NDEC exam. Fee for OSCE and written exam. You need a study material. If you want to attend some preparatory courses, their fee you have to buy the dental materials for practice, for your NDEC exam, as well as for your bench exams. You need instruments, typodonts, simulated teeth for practice. You need to, at times, attend the training courses as well, so they are also costly. Well, another question comes, like, if everything goes smooth, how much time it takes before we will get our license like if we are passing all the exams so anywhere between 18 to 24 months or maybe more now the, because of the uh, unavailability of the seats for different exams so it may take longer another question comes that what would be the cost if we go to the university well every university their fee differs so you have to check with their websites. Again, first of all, if 
once you are applying for your AFK exam. So fee for the evaluation to end up for your documents, then fee for the AFK exam, study material and the prep course fee if you are taking one of those. Then university fee, books, residence, computer, instruments and supplies. Keep in mind application fee also applies. You When you are sending the application, they charge you good amount for processing fee as well. Well, again, the time required after AFK, you have to wait at least one year before the classes will start and then two years to three years of schooling depending upon the university. Now, how to acquire the dental license in the United States? Accredited and non-accredited dental schools. CODA, C-O-D-A. The Commission on Dental Accreditation serves the public and profession by developing and implementing accreditation standards that promote and monitor the continuous quality and improvement of dental education programs. By reciprocal agreement, programs that are aggregated by the Commission on Dental Accreditation of Canada are recognized by the Commission on Dental Accreditation, United States. So if someone has got a degree, degree, not the license, direct license, degree, we are talking about degree at the moment, from Canada, after appearing in certain exams in USA, they would be able to practice dentistry in United States. Similarly, those who got their degree from United States after taking the OSCE and written exam, they would be allowed to practice in Canada. Well, individual attending dental programs in one country and planning to practice in another country should carefully investigate the requirements of the licensing jurisdiction where they wish to practice. Means the uh, state if like you have done your degree in Canada, you want to move to United States, check which state you are intending to move. Are they accepting Canadian degree or not? Well, if somebody is going to the dental school in the United States for the four year program, so what would be the protocol? High school? Then they go for four years of university in health sciences. Then they appear in the debt exam. And after that, four years of dental school. Then, of course, the American boards, they have to appear in that. And then the regional boards. Then they will be able to practice in that region, in those states for which the regional board has been attempted and passed. For the non-accredited programs, the foreign qualified dentist, no matter they are having a degree BDS or DDS, they will be considered in the same, uh, like you can say that they will be considered similarly. That's, they, they have the same weightage. If somebody is coming with a DDS from some other country, which is not an, a, which is a non-accredited program, they won't get any preference. Steps for the foreign qualified dentists. First of all, you have to go for the documents verification. ECE verification is very important because on the basis of ECE verification, you will be allowed to appear in the exams. You can also go for WES because some of the universities, they want WES verification as well. Before you start any procedure, go for your dent pin from the ADA website. Dent pin means dental personal identifier number. It is a unique personal identifier for professionals and students involved with the US dental education system and standardized testing programs. Well, Previously, 
there were two exams which were being conducted by the Joint Commission of National Dental Examination, NBDE Part 1 and NBDE Part 2. These exams are being replaced by a new exam called INBDE. As of September 4, 2020, the JCNDE announced that it will extend the last date to take the NBDE Part 1 to December 31st, 2020 for all qualified dental candidates. That is, regardless of whether or not they were trained by the CODA accredited dental programs. And NBDE Part 2 will be discontinued, like it is discontinued now, on December 31st, 2022. The last exam was being conducted on or before this date. Now this new exam, which has replaced the NBDE Part 1 and Part 2 is called INBDE. Again, JCNDE, it conducts this exam. It integrates content from the biomedical, behavioral, and clinical sciences to replace the NBDE parts 1 and 2. The purpose of the INBDE mirrors that of the NBDE program to assist dental boards in determining the qualifications of individuals who seek licensure to practice dentistry. Another exam is ADAT, which I told you earlier. It is known as Advanced Dental Admission Test. This exam helps you in getting uh, into some of the American universities, but you have to already like pass your INBDE. You should have your INBDE result with you if you are applying to the American University. A that will give you some more leverage for the American universities. But some of the Canadian universities, they rely solely on ADAT exam. Well, it is used by 400 plus advanced dental education programs to assess applicants potential for success. The test takes 4.5 hours, means 4 hours 30 minutes to complete and is offered at test centers throughout the US and Canada. The ADAT consists of multiple choice test questions presented in English and includes a battery of three tests. There will be 80 MCQs from the biomedical sciences. 80 either standalone, standalone MCQs means just questions, uh, general standalone type of questions from the clinical sciences. And there could be questions which would be case-based, means giving you patients age, their gender, their chief complaint, and then some information about their history of present illness, and then question on that. Questions on data, research interpretation, and evidence-based dentistry, 40 items will be there. Now, some of the Canadian dental schools, including University of Toronto and McGill University, they accept results of ADAT for admission in their internationally qualified dentists degree programs. Well, after that, INBDE and if you have chosen to go for ADAT, you need to show your English proficiency as well. TOEFL IBT exam, that is the only exam which is being accepted for English proficiency in the United States. It has four parts, written, speaking, reading, and listening. Check the websites of those universities where you want to apply. What are their requirements? You can take this exam as many times as you wish to improve your score. And definitely better the score, more the chances that you will be called for the interview as well as for the bench exam. After that, you have to 
start with your application process. There is a centralized system which is called CAPED. Certain universities, they are uh, like you can apply to those universities through the CAPED, but there are few non CAPED universities as well. What is this? ADEA CAPED. ADEA Centralized Application for Advanced Placement of the International Dentists that is available to all individuals applying to the participating programs. Applicants to the ADEA CAPED are internationally educated dental graduates who wish to practice dentistry in the United States or Canada. ADEA CAPED includes advanced standing programs which are typically shorter in length. Shorter in length means two years or three years. Once you have the degree from back home, you have uh, gone through your INBDA exam, you have passed it, and or like maybe or may not be with ADAT exam, then you apply through the CAPET for that two years or three years program depending upon the university you are applying to. DDS or DMD, no matter whatever the degree you will get, both are equivalent. Well, for the CAPIT application portal, you need to create your profile, you need letters of recommendation, they are all electronic now. Means your referees would be uploading the letters of recommendation at the portal. You need to have a statement of purpose, your TOEFL score, your NBD exam result, your ECE evaluation. Then you have to select the program from the list of available programs. Well, some of the universities, after you submit your uh, application at CAPED and you have chosen the program, then you will receive an email from that university. They may ask you for a supplemental application. It could be an application form which could be paper-based or electronic. They may ask you three more letters of recommendation, preferably from other referees which you have not already submitted. You have to also deposit the supplemental application fee and some other documents whatever they will ask depending upon which university you are applying to. After that if you will be shortlisted they will call you for an interview and for bench exam or just for the bench exam or just for the interview depending upon the university. Well after that, they will be going for the final selection. Now, again, question comes, what about the finances? Either you would be having your own funds or you can apply for the bank loans. At times, you need some co-signers for those bank loans because they are quite a hefty amount. Well, after that, you will get your degree, then you will go for your regional boards, and then you would be able to practice in United States. But if you plan to go to Canada, after that, again, you have to apply to National Dental Examination Board of Canada, appear in their OSCE exam, written exam, and then go for the provincial licensure, and start practicing in Canada. Another thing, people ask me, okay, we are already graduates. What about some post-grad uh, opportunities in United States? Yes, there are certain post-grad opportunities if you are lucky enough to get into those. And for that, again, this ADEA, it has a portal called PASS, the American Dental Education Association Postdoctoral Application Support Service, ADEA PASS. 
It is again a centralized application service for individuals applying to advanced dental education programs. This simplifies the application process by allowing applicants to complete one standardized application rather than sending individual applications to each program which will definitely takes a lot of time. Well, before applying to the ADEA pass, you need to take appropriate tests like INBD or those who have already passed their NBDE part 1 or part 2, then TOEFL if the person is a foreign trained dentist, there, some of the universities they need GRE, unofficial self-reported test results only, and some of the universities they need ADAT as well. Well, Diplomate of the American Boards. Board certification means that the specialist has met the highest requirements of competence within the specified field, achieving the status of board certification demands an immense amount of dedication and hard work beyond the regular rigors of specialization education. You appear in these exams after you complete your residency in the specific field the specialized field. Direct licensing. Only in few states of United States, on the individual basis, after the INVD exam and the regional boards, a person would be able to go for the direct license, but it is on individual basis. It is not available to everyone. The person has to inquire that state where they are intending to practice if they will be offering the direct licensing or not after you have passed your nbd part one or part and part two or inbd exams general dental residency programs for foreign trained dentists the advanced standing program for foreign trained dentists does not focus on a specialization but rather all subjects taught in a dental school it is basically a bridge course making an international dentist equivalent to any u.s trained dentist in. with this program you will repeat two years of dental training to be eligible for the dental licensure in the united states general practice residency programs for foreign trained dentists some of the programs i am just mentioning over here but these programs they are offered in one year and then not offered in the other so if you are planning to go for these uh, general practice residency programs then you have to check those uh, websites if they are offering or not what are their requirements then apply but definitely they will be requiring first of all that you would have done with NBDE part 1 and part 2 or INBDE exam. So I always tell my students choose your path wisely and never look for any shortcuts. There is no shortcut to success. Remember that. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this was of some help to all of you. The only purpose of making this video was that to provide you some information regarding the North American system for the foreign trained dentists. Thank you very much.